Hello, in this video we're going to have a go at making an abstract painting. So um, I've already done a video which um, used some of the elements, uh, some of the things that you find in these three uh, paintings. The first one and the last one are abstract. The middle one is more semi-abstract, meaning that there are some forms in it that are just general shapes and others are shapes that you would recognise like people uh, in there. But these ones are just shapes in there, mostly circular and curved shapes down here. For Sonia Delaune, the artist, this one's August Maka, and this one is uh, Vasily Kandinsky. And um, his shapes here, lots of them are geometric, aren't they? So they're shapes you'd recognise, uh, such as triangles, semicircles, circles, quadrilaterals here. There's some that look like rectangles. Uh, you've got some squiggly lines as well. Kandinsky also did um, lots of abstract paintings where he did, um, he did shapes that weren't drawn with a ruler at all. Um, they weren't perfect circles. They were just um, lots of uh, random uh, brush strokes. Um, so there are all many kinds of abstract paintings, um, but we're gonna have a go at our own. Um, okay, so, and again, we're looking at bringing together some of the things that you may have learned about uh, painting with watercolors. You might have done a watercolor landscape. Uh, you might have painted with a greater tone. You might have uh, explored different textures, overlaying colors one over the other. The color wheel, you might have explored complementary colors. You might have explored different ways to um, uh, apply the pa uh, paint and uh, turning them into little drawings um, and also different ways of making um, brush marks. Um, and here's the um, uh, the video that uh, I've just made, which is um, uh, using some of those techniques on something that's not so abstract. It's got some of those abstract elements uh, that we've just been uh, looking at in some of these paintings, but it's obviously based on a self uh, on a portrait. Uh, there. Okay, so um, for the abstract version, then I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to work on a larger size, so this is A3. Uh, this size, so it's um, twice the size that we've been working on so far, twice the size of your sketchbook page. And um, yeah, so if I look at this, then I'm going to start uh, by drawing some shapes with um, a ruler and um, also some circular uh, shapes. Okay, and now I think I'll just do some wavy lines or some big sweeping curves like this. Okay, here I'll do something a bit more wavy. Okay, there you go. So that's all I've got. Um, I don't want to make it too busy. I can always add more later, can't I? But, uh, but yeah, that's how it looks so far. So now it's just a case of using what we know about um, how to apply watercolour paint and complementary colours as well. Um, and um, and yeah, and uh, have some fun with it and, uh, and get going. So I'll just get started then with um, a little bit of red. Of course, make sure that my brush is clean, the water's clean and the palette's clean. So I'm gonna, tackle this large area. I like the way that Kandinsky um, went from one colour to the next and kind of um, uh, starts off dark and then fades um, and then turn, uh, becomes another colour. So I like that. I'm going to start off quite dark around this edge here. I'll go all the way around that shape like that. I'm going to let this go into dry brush here. Look at that, I'm getting some nice texture there. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to wreck the brush. This whole area here can be dry brush. Nice, I like that. Okay, I'll get a little bit of water on the brush now and start to fade that, so start to change the tone. Start to make it go lighter and lighter. Now, I don't have a piece of newspaper underneath my um, uh, 
painting, but you should probably have a piece underneath yours. Okay, so that, that started to fade, it was dark and then got lighter. And let's make it go, clean your brush by painting the bottom of your uh, water pot. And then I'm gonna make it uh, go into yellow. I would say, by the way, that the brush you should be using should, uh, it shouldn't really be smaller than a number six. This is a number six brush. Um, really, I should probably be using a bigger brush. So I put the yellow uh, in an area where there is no paint, first of all, just so we get the yellow on its own. And then I gradually bring it across to the red there and it'll start to blend together, as you can see, and become orange. So I've got a hard line there, which I don't really want. So all I do is a cleaning brush, so it's just got water on it, get most of the water off and just go over it and it'll, bend, it'll blend in, you see, just like that. Um, okay, uh, yeah, I quite like that. Let's make that yellow go a bit greenish now. So I'm gonna put green into this corner. In fact, now I'm gonna put a bit more yellow on first. And this shape, let's get a nice warm yellow in there. And now I'll get green. Let's start by just kind of drawing lines along the edges of the lines that are already there, the pencil lines. And then I just paint outwards from there. Right, and the moment that it starts to hit another color, I'll stop, I'll clean my brush, get most of the water off on a paper towel, and I'll just gently blend it in. There you go. Now, when I look at that, I think the green isn't quite green enough. So I'm just gonna get more green on the brush. You can always add darker layers. It's harder to lighten areas in watercolor. The way to lighten, of course, is to uh, paint a bit of water on the area that you want to make lighter and then dab it. Don't uh, scrub it, just dab it with a paper towel. There we go, that's getting a bit better bit more interesting. I can always come back to any area I want to as well. If I'm thinking it's still not green enough, even after it's dry, I can add another layer. That's no problem. Okay, so I've gone from dark to light with um, a single tone. I've blended one color into another. So there's, there's two of the skills that we've uh, already practiced. I've done dry brush there. So there's a third skill uh, that we've practiced already. And um, yeah, next what I'm gonna do is, I think I will do in this area here, just paint it with water. This shape here, I've just painted with water. And then what I'm gonna do is get a bit of blue into that, I think. Now, I could do dots with blue. I could also let it run a little bit, see what happens. Yeah, let it run down a touch. Okay, so let's run a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is just press down a bit harder with it. Roll the brush a little bit. Make some texture here. Have some bits that will hopefully dry darker. Okay, 
I'm gonna bring in another color. That can be blue and green. And because the paper's already wet, it spreads itself out a bit, becomes a bit blurry and uh, interesting. Right, I've done a green background here and then dots of green and dots of yellow and I'm going to scrape it now. I don't know how this will go. We'll see. I'm going to scrape in a circular motion. Let's see if we get something interesting from it. No, oh, yeah, a bit. I'm going to go in different ways, different directions, I think. Yeah, a little bit interesting. It um, it starts to pick up some of the paper, meaning that it uh, bits of the paper start to come off. I think if I could do that again. I go for a bolder colour on top, which is what I'll do now. I'll just put a little bit of red in there and see if that makes it a bit more interesting. This could be something you could practice in advance in your sketchbook, of course. If you've got time, or oh, I think it's fine to do some of your experimenting on whatever artwork you, you're producing. Whatever you're making, really. Uh, and I'll leave it off this circle here. That kind of looks like flowers in a field, doesn't it? A little bit. Right, let's try that. Drag that across. Yeah, looks okay. Adds texture, adds interest. What I'm trying to get here is a kind of opaque layer. So when we look at uh, some of these, that is kind of a pretty opaque red, meaning that you can't see through it to the white paper. Here you can see through to the white paper, those colours that kind of seem brighter. They're thinner, so you can see the white paper through them as you can see there. But look, we've got some really opaque colours too. So I like that contrast of the thinner watery colours and the opaque colours. And the way to do it is with patience, layer after layer. So I've done one layer there and I do another layer on top the same colour and I keep going at it basically until I've got it nice and bold and vibrant and making that uh, that red just really stand out and again not much water on the bush So here what I'm trying to do is uh, just put different colours into the gaps between where the black paint has been uh, blown. Sometimes you might have too much paint on your brush if that happens. Just dab it or too, too watery. Just dab your brush onto a paper towel and then you'll have more control over the paint that you've got on the brush. Then. So here it started to pool a bit, meaning that there's a bit too much on there. So all you've got to do 
gently dab it, never wipe, just dab. And if it's not red or orangey red enough for you, you just need to put further layers on. So, so far, these are all transparent layers. And I'm gonna try and make it a mixture of opaque layers. So a bit like over here, where it is, um, uh, it's not transparent, it's not see-through. You can't see the white paper underneath. A uh, mixture of that and a mixture of um, transparent layers where you can see through. Just trying to uh, make this um, blue tone uh, here kind of go dark and then fade a little bit and get lighter and then gradually go through a little bit of a, a green phase and then into yellow. So I've got yellow next to uh, blue. So next thing to do is just get a tiny bit of water on my brush, dab it a little bit, just water, and kind of blend them together. It will go lighter, but then hopefully you won't be able to see where one color ends and where the next color starts. Okay, just like that. And the last thing I want to do with that is just make it a bit darker here with the blue, just to try and make it go from dark, darker blue to a lighter blue, which is another one of the skills that we've been practicing. So once I've got it like that, you can see there's a hard blue, uh, dark blue edge there. Once again, I just clean my brush. I get most of the water off it and gently go over where that, where those two uh, where that darker edge joins the uh, lighter part go side to side and you see you can blend them together uh, a little bit like that. Uh, sometimes we tend to just use the colours that are there in the palette but um, don't forget to, to mix some colours as well. There's no purple in here so uh, I've got to mix one. So you'll get a better range of colour if you actually mix some colours uh, as well. So with this bit here, um, I wasn't really happy with the way this bit looked. Uh, the scraping didn't work very well. I wanted to make it a bit more interesting. So I, that purple color, I kind of overlaid that same purple um, over the green there. And, um, and so you've got um, uh, one color overlaid on top of the other, making a new color. And here I wanted to challenge myself thinking about the color wheel um, that you may have done. You may have done that lesson, uh, that video it looks like that. Um, I thought I'd try and do a colour spiral. So starting with blue and on the colour wheel after blue comes green and then after that comes yellow um, and then into orange and red um, and a darker red and then purple. Purple is uh, purple and orange were the only two colours that I needed to, to mix. The others were already on the watercolour uh, palette. Okay, and where one joins the other to make it blend a little bit, you just clean your brush, get it pretty much dry, nearly dry on your paper towel. And then all you do is join those two bits together very gently and they should blend together just like that. Okay, that's it. And then after purple, it would go back to blue, which is where we started. So I'll just get a little bit of blue on your brush and finish that off. There you go, so maybe you'd like to challenge yourself with something similar. It doesn't have to be a spiral, it could go in any shape you'd like. Remember, if you've put a layer on and you don't like the way it looks, this orange over green looks a bit muddy, a bit brownish, all you've got to do is let it dry a bit and then mix the same colour again and put it on, but this time a bit thicker, meaning that there's less water involved. That's all you've got to do if you want to change the way it looks.
So it's a good idea to um, keep evaluating, keep reviewing what you've done as uh, as you go along. Um, so as you can see, I've reached a point where you could you could uh, call this finished. Um, and so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to compare to um, these three paintings that uh, we looked at at the beginning, uh, which we're going to use as kind of influences, weren't we? So. Um, I think I've got quite a few of the elements that are in the top one. Um, obviously, it's kind of more or less based on that, isn't it? With similar shapes and similar uh, similar lines. In here, I was I was looking for um, I was trying to use some of these opaque shapes, which I have I've done here and here. Um, yeah, so I've got some of that. I don't have any of the uh, elements that aren't abstract. Everything I've got is pretty much abstract. So um, yeah, and on here, yeah, I have used a little bit of the, the kind of uh, circles that Sonia Delaunay used as well. Uh, I'm also, I would also take this opportunity to look back through your sketchbook and look at all the um, skills that we've learned and which ones have I practiced. So it's best not to think of, um, you know, your final version as some, some kind of finished uh, piece that um, that has to be um, has to be amazing, has to be really good in some way. It's more a way to practice um, the skills that you've learned, just bringing them all together in one place and not having to worry about, does it look like the thing that I want it to look like? Because it's abstract. We've just done some, some shapes instead. So we don't have the pressure of, a, of, of worrying about uh, whether it looks like the thing we want it to look like. Um, okay, so um, what, we've, what we've done, we've already talked about um, opaque and translucent. So these are opaque, meaning they're, they're flat, bold colors, aren't they, that you can't see through. Um, and here, for example, this would be a translucent kind of uh, green. So this green and this green are exactly the same, but this one's darker because it's just got an extra layer uh, on top, um, basically. So this is a bit more opaque and this is more translucent. So we've got that in there. We've done some paint sp uh, spraying there of different colors. I think it works best when there's a, a few colors and, and it works well when it's overlaid on top of another color, I like that. Uh, speaking of overlays, we've got this um, purple is overlaid here on top of the green as well. We had a go at scraping, which um, in my opinion wasn't that successful. We've done um, a kind of multicolored spiral, um, which was influenced by the color wheel, wasn't it? Um, here and here I've used dry brush. I've got, uh, I've got a single color and I've done a graded tone in it. It's gone from dark to light. Um, so here there was more water on the brush. But then I um, I basically didn't uh, didn't dip the brush in again and let it go a bit drier and drier and drier, and then it becomes a bit like this where you get to see the brush strokes and you get to see the paper through um, through it as well. Uh, same situation here. Um, and when I use dry brush here, I was trying to make this this shape here, this circular shape, looks like some kind of weird kind of eye now, doesn't it? Um, uh, make it look like it's come forwards and this this reddish orange bit here makes it look like it's kind of a shadow and it makes it it kind of lifts this shape uh, above it. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, here I've tried to blend colours here going from blue to green and yellow. Same here um, with um, two types of purple are kind of um, cooler purple with more blue in it and a warmer purple with um, uh, more red in it. Um, I've also tried to put um, thoughts about complementary colours here. So you've got yellow next to uh, purple. Uh, we've got green next to red. Uh, we've got orange next to blue uh, in different places. Um, okay, I think that's about it. Oh yeah, and here, this was, we wet the paper first, didn't we? And then, um, yeah, we, uh, we dropped, uh, we just did lots of, um, different colors that run in different directions. Oh, and of course the paint spraying uh, as well. Uh, sorry, uh, not paint spraying, paint blowing. So we blew, I did like a, a big kind of uh, black pool, I suppose, and then just uh, turn the pa paper, kept turning the paper, blow it a bit, keep turning the paper and keep blowing so it goes in all sorts of different directions. And then I decided to put different colors uh, into the gaps and take me time over that. And I think that looks pretty, Effective. So we've got a mixture of geometric shapes. So is that straight lines and circles and uh, curves here? And we've got um, we've got something more organic, meaning it looks a bit more natural. It goes off in in kind of different random directions. And I like the contrast uh, between those two things. Um, so I think the last thing I'd like to do is some of these edges. Um, I'm thinking they're not kind of uh, defined enough. So. I'm gonna first. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna get the ruler back on that line 
gonna go over with the pencil and see uh, a bit harder and see if that improves it. If not, if not, I think I like that as it is. I've got a Sharpie pen here. I could go over with that, but I think I think I quite like that as it is. Now, I wouldn't do that over all the lines, just the ones that I feel like I'd like to stand out. You'll also notice that I've left some areas white. I think I'd like to use the effect of the white paper there um, as well. Now, um, another way to make something um, come forward, so I want this triangle to kind of come forward a little bit, is um, as we've done here, you put a darker tone, you put a darker tone um, on the outside of it, which is what we've done here and what we've done here. Um, so you can do that just with your normal 2B sketching pencil or any other pencil that, that, um, that you might have. So all I do is I gently shade along that line, going away from the shape. And I shade outwards just a bit like that, and I just smudge it with my finger. And already it's starting to look like it's, um, it's created a little shadow, making it look like this large triangle here is kind of like cut out and it's sitting on top of the background. And look how far away I've shaded, not far at all. From there to there, it's no more than a centimetre. So, um, don't, uh, don't get carried away and end up doing this grey all over all over the place because you'll end up with um, with a very grey picture there. We've got all these lovely colours. We don't want to um, go over too much of it. So there you go. You could do that uh, on that edge. I could do the exact same thing on the other side. And it just makes it uh, look like this triangle is coming forward. It's just another skill to practice and um, adds a bit more interest to the composition, I think, to the way you've arranged things. There you go. You see, no more than a centimeter away from the edge where you started. And then just give it a gentle smudge with your finger and it will look like that shape has come forwards. So you could put that in other places. Um, I know Kandinsky did it with a circle shape here. So I'm gonna do it here as well. And it's a good way to help you kind of redefine the edges of shapes. So if you've lost the edge because you've painted over it, you can bring that edge back again by drawing it. Um, it's possible to use pastel for this as well, but I think it's, it's kind of uh, easy and straightforward just with an ordinary uh, 2B sketching pencil. There you go. So there's two examples of, um, of doing that. Here is an example where Kandinsky did it. You can see that there. He did it with colour, but it's the same sort of thing. He's done it there as well. Um, all right. So, yeah, it's just a way of bringing together all of the, uh, many of the skills that you've uh, learned um, through using watercolour and, um, yeah, take it in any direction you like and have fun with it.